Dobro, u redu. Jeste li mi dobro? How is your day today? Yeah, raining, okay. Has it been raining in the places where you live? Ahmed mentioned that it was raining. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we were having a rainy day, yeah. Mm, well, I hope no serious floods, Mirza, but uh, yes. Okay, so Emin said that sun was shining. You were lucky, Emin. Mm-hmm, it's also sunny in Tuzla. Okay, yes. I think in, that in most places in um, in our country it was raining, has been raining in, in Mostar today, well, just a little. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ahmed. Uh, but yeah, apparently in certain places it was sunny. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys. Um, well, before we start, uh, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. You can ask them in English or in uh, Bosnian, in our language, whatever, okay? Možete postaviti pitanje prije nego što počnemo, ako ih ima. My day was okay, I'm a bit tired, it's Friday, but yeah, I'm feeling fine. Yes, Mirza. So, would you like me to... Explain this in English or again, or in Bosnian. Okay, znači rekli smo, evo, čisto da ne bi bilo neki zabuna vezano za koncept ispita, par puta smo već pričali o tome. Dakle, na ispitu ćete imati SSK pitanja. SSK pitanja i pitanja, dakle, ta pitanja otvorenog tipa ili SSK pitanja koja se odnosi na IT sadržaje koji su obrađeni u dokumentima koji su vam dostupni na sistemu i pitanja otvorenog tipa, dakle, koja će se, pardon, pitanja sa ponđenim odgovorima ili jesno pitanja koja se odnose na gramatiku. Dakle, da, na ovom prvom parcijalnom ispitu, kao i na drugom, ćete imati, naravno, ta SSK pitanja, evo, danas ćemo malo diskutovati o određenim sadržajima koji su obrađeni u dokumentima koje ste imali priliku da vidite, a pitanja vezana za te sadržaje će se pojaviti, odnosno mogu se pojaviti na ispitu. Ne znam, znate li kako u principu funkcioniše ta izbor pitanja koji se... koji se vrše na ispitu, dakle ono što se dešava, da, 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 mogu vam dati primjer, naravno. Htjela sam reći da se, dakle, pitanja su pohranjena u bazu podataka, dakle, nalaze se u bazi podataka i, dakle, niko ne dobije ista pitanja, dakle, one se biraju randomly, dakle, po principu slučajnog izbora iz baze pitanja, tako da može doći obzir bilo koje pitanje, dakle koje ima, koje je napravljeno, odnosno koje postoje u bazi pitanja, a evo rekla sam već i ranije da se ta pitanja odnose, dakle sljučivo na sadržaje koje su obrađene u dokumentima, odnosno ono o čemu ćemo nekim, barem od tih sadržaja ćemo diskutovati i na ovim časovima online nastave. Naravno, naravno da trebate svojim riječima odgovarati, dakle to je poželjno i to jeste način na koje trebate odgovoriti. Naravno, određena pitanja vam ne daju baš puno mogućnosti da za slobodu u smislu da zahtijevaju precizne odgovore kao što je Evo, Mirza mi je pitao da dam primjer, ako se recimo radi o pitanjima what are the components of a CPU ili what a CPU stand for, dakle možete dobiti pitanje koje se odnosi na određeni akronim, ne znam jesmo li spominjali, akronime ranije, jer sam sa ovama razgovarala o tome, dakle šta su akronime, a šta su skraćenice, po čemu se razlikuju, Na primjer, je to Central Processing Unity Acronym, je akronim, dakle, za tako pitanje koje je vrlo jednostavno, 
Dobro, evo, svakako možemo sada o tome kratko prodiskutovati. Dakle, akronimi, kao što ste mogli dosta da možda i zaključiti, ili neki od vas sigurno i svi znate već to, dakle, se sastoje od prvih slova riječi, dakle, koje začinjavaju određeni pojam, odnosno naziv neke komponente ili nečeg drugog. Dakle, na primjer, sad smo ga spomenuli, CPU, dakle, vodite računa da ako dobijete na ispitu pitanje what is CPU stand for, dakle, da to pitanje zahtjeva da u odgovoru samo napišete Central Processing Unit ili what does RAM stand for, yes, then the answer would be random access memory, of course. Yes, yes, graphical user interface i slično. Međutim, ako dobijete pitanje i obratite pažnju na to, dakle, what is CPU, znači, ili what is the function of a CPU, naravno na to pitanje trebate odgovoriti opširnije, odnosno trebate dati konkreten odgovor, da kažete što je u stvari central processing unit, da je to komponenta računara koja ima svoje određene funkcije i da navedete naravno koje su to funkcije, dakle, koja je namjena, koja je svrha, dakle, korištenja te komponente u računaru. Ili, evo, pričat ćemo, možda vidjet ćemo sljedeći put o, o, o Možemo i ovaj put, evo dogovorit ćemo se, možete mi reći šta vam u stvari, šta mislite da vam je potrebnije i o čemu biste voljeli možda da diskutujemo. If we're talking about memory, ok, so computer memory is classified into two main categories, znači dijeli se na Sad ću vam na to odgovoriti, Ahmed. Dijeli se na primarnu i sekundarnu, kao što predpostavljam znate. Znači, pitanje može biti which types of memory are considered to be primary memory, znači koje se tipo memorije smatruje primarnom memorijom. You can try to answer, ok, so which types of memory are primary memory? What would you say? Odgovorit ću vam na sva pitanja, evo pokušavam da vam dam primjer i da vas navedam da odgovorite na pitanje da biste zaključili da li je to adekvatno. Evo rekli sam koji tipovi memorije se rade, se smatraju primarno memorijom, na takvo pitanje biste trebali odgovoriti tako da kažete da su to RAM i ROM. Tako je, tako je. Ili, na primjer, what is the function of read-only memory ili kakve tipove podataka se pohranjuju u ROM i sl. Ono što sam ja, o čemu sam htjela da danas diskutujemo su načini primjene ICT-a, odnosno, evo, još jedan akronim, dakle, ICT, Information and Communication Technology in Different Professions. Mhm in different professions or in different areas of life. Imamo, ne znam koliko ste obratili pažnje, ali uopšte imali priliku da pročitate materijale, pa su u materijalima su navedene određene specifične oblasti u kojima se može primijeniti, naravno, ICT, o tome možemo počet diskutovati danas, pa možete dobiti pitanje tipa how can computers or ICT be used in not only, for example, in medicine, but in any other field or profession in life. Ok, pitali ste me, da, 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 znači svi dokumente koji se postave do ispita će biti na ispitu. Dakle, imate još, čini mi se, dvije sedmice, je li tako, ispravite vam ako grežim, mislim da imaju još dvije sedmice do prvog parcijalnog ispita. Dakle, sve ono što se objavi do datuma kada je ispit, odnosno do te ispitne sedmice, će biti obuhvaćeno prvim parcijalnom ispitom. S tim da, evo, ja mogu svakako, recimo, u ovoj sedmici pred ispite postaviti materijale koji će biti obuhvaćeni tim prvim parcijalnim ispitom iz te sedmice, možda već na početku sedmice, na primjer, u ponedeljak. Taj ponedeljak u toj zadnjoj sedmici, tako da, mislim, u zadnjoj sedmici pred parcijalne ispite. Tako da, evo, imate vremena da je to malo svakako pročitajte. Ok, neko je pitao može li, odnosno radi li se ispit na računaru, da radi, dakle ne radi se na papiru nego na računaru, na pitanje o tipovima, o konceptu ispita, odnosno tipovima pitanja koje možete očekivati sam odgovorila 
je li još bilo neko pitanje, samo sekundicu. Da, ocenjuje li se tačno svoj govora smisla? Naravno da se ocenjuje jedno i drugo. Dakle, na pitanje trebate naravno pokušati odgovoriti tačno. Naravno da će se ocenjivati da li ste odgovorili tačno na pitanje, da li ste to ispravno napisali, s tim da to neće biti tako strogo ocjenjivano u smislu da ako se napravi određena pravopisna greška, dakle greška u pisanju ili greška u određenoj gramatičkoj strukturi, da se to neće posebno strogo ocjenjivati, ali svakako se sve uzima u obzir. Znači, vrlo je bitno da odgovorite. Dakle, dužina ispisa zavisi od broja pitanja, ali to je u prosjeku traje nekih 40 minuta ili duže, zavisno od broja pitanja koje se odreze za taj ispit. Dakle, parcijalni ispit u prosjeku traje nekih 40 ili ne znam, 50 maksimalno minuta, ali kažem, to vrijeme je uvijek optimalno određeno za broj pitanja koja budete imali. Dakle, ostavljeno je uvijek dovoljno vremena da uradite ispit bez žurbe, bez pritiska, opet po pravilu se za ispit iz engleskog jezika ostavi, po mom dosadašnje iskustvo, ono što sam ja primetila, je da puno brže u principu završite ispit u odnosu na ono vreme koje vam je na raspolaganju, ali nemojte žurti, mislim, nema potrebe iskoristiti to vreme koje imate, svakako da pokušate odgovoriti na sva pitanja, naravno na ova pitanja otvorenog tipa, je važno da da napišete, dakle, odgovor, da pokušate odgovoriti na bilo koji način, zašto kažem, na bilo koji način dosta često se desi da se ta pitanja preskoče, ja sam stekla dojam do sada da vam je možda pomalo i ne znam, evo neću reći lijeno, ali niste baš raspoloženi često da odgovarate na takva pitanja, ali to svakako imajte na umu da naravno odgovaranju na ta pitanja možete značajno poboljšati rezultat. Tako da evo svakako nema razloga i da ih preskačete, da ne napišete ogovore, obzirom da se pogotovo u na ovom predmetu, dakle na samom početku na predmetu engleske jeske, jedan radi o zaista vrlo jednostavnim sadržajima koji su vam poznati, koji su vam već od ranije poznati, a koje ćete usvajati ili revidirati u okviru drugih predmeta na prvoj godini. Eto, ima li još neko pitanje? Okay, so uh, what I had in mind for today, but you can you can uh, choose. Okay, so you can uh, think about what would be more useful um, is either to talk about. Let me just share my screen. Just a second. Okay, can you see the document? Uh, so yes, we can either talk about different uses uh, or different ways how ICT can be used in various fields uh, of life or in various professions, or we can uh, be discussing computer architecture, or um, we can be talking about components, computer components, and the way how they work. So um, what do you think might be more useful? Što mislite da vam bilo korisnije? Ono što sam ja planirala jeste da da malo diskutujemo o nekim različitim načinima primjene ICT-a, ali isto tako možemo, evo, ako vam više odgovara, pričati o ovim computer components, kako god želite, evo, konkretno ima vas dosta, ali mislim da ne znam, hoćete li svi napisati šta je to što biste više željeli, evo, pokušajte se malo aktivnije uključiti ovo što vas pitam. Či, evo, imamo i ovu opciju. To talk about computer components. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let me just uh, point out some important things or things to pay attention to uh, about or that are in relation to these documents um, with regard to uses or the ways how ICT can be used in various professions. Um, in these lessons here, you should think about uh, as I said previously, you should think about some specific uses. For example, uh, the photos that you can see here, okay? The, uh, this is the first, I think, document that was uh, posted on the system. Um, your task, of course, would be, and now you can think about it, we'll just do this shortly, um, about the ways how ICT is used and what are the things that are shown on, on, on these photos. Okay, so uh, what do you think is shown on this first photo? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is an ATM. Okay, an ATM is an example of, uh, of an acronym. Okay, so uh, it stands for automatic teller machine. Um, you should know, mm -hmm. you should, yeah, this is a second photo, but just take your time. Um, Yes, yes, uh, in ATM, you should think about the way how ATMs work, okay? So it's, this is one of the examples of how ICT can be applied in, um, I would say, this kind of financial sector. Uh, then distance uh, education, okay, or distance learning, uh, you can tell me now if you like uh, about your experience so far in being distance learning students because this is important of course think about possible uses of ICT in education okay so obviously this second photo um, is related to the way how ICT can be used in education okay uh, how can education be improved by using ICT um, and in which ways okay the third one is a bit I would say yeah well specific what, what do you think is shown on this photo mm -hmm. it's a control tower okay so what do you think might be controlled or um, by using ICT or what are possible ways of using ICT in this case or in this let's say profession mm -hmm. okay so flights and radar mm -hmm. okay what else needs to be checked when it comes to to airplanes and air traffic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's right okay so weather conditions yes Mm, there is this GPS, uh, yeah, uh, let's say function or um, option that you have. Mm -hmm. Okay, landing or safe landing, as you said. Mm -hmm. And then uh, anything that is um, related to the way how planes work. So anything that uh, that you can find in an airplane is. Uh, sorry, <laughs> is uh, controlled by the use of ICT, such as fuel consumption, well, uh, whether the engines are working fine, uh, and all other details. We can say, of course, that ICT in general uh, can be applied in any profession, um, so <clears throat> in, a, in many different ways. What would you say is the main uh, purpose of using ICT? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, let, let, let's. Uh, I've been you know, while we were writing. I was just thinking about whether to continue with this. I uh, let me just tell you. Uh, we will do this part now, as I planned originally. We can leave computer architecture for the next time. We will be discussing. We'll just continue talking about these computer components and computer architecture. But we we may just do these things now. Uh, 
yeah, as, as I've just asked you, what is the main purpose of using ICT? And then we can discuss these various cases or situations or different professions, at least the ones that are mentioned here in the document, or maybe some others that you might uh, want to talk about. Okay, so the main uh, purpose or the main reason or the best thing about ICT is the fact that it makes, yes, it makes our lives, it makes our lives what? better or easier yes okay mm -hmm. okay so we are more mm -hmm. okay uh, we are more in, in, in whatever we are doing in our work we are more what would you say which adjective would you choose we are more yes okay it makes execution of hard tasks easier uh, we are supposedly like more effective we do things uh, faster um, uh, but of course ICT also makes our lives um, let's say more fun so we we enjoy more by or thanks to the use of ICT yes uh, ICT makes us happier now we can of course be also discussing uh, negative effects of ICT do you think there are any negative effects now by the way just to mention this now is there anything mm -hmm. so what would you say are negative or side effects mm -hmm. privacy what else might be a problem mm -hmm. what else might be a problem what do you would you say now uh, some of you Mm -hmm. Okay, health issues. Okay, then this concern that robots will replace humans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, some of you mentioned communication before as, a, of course, a good side of using ICT. Uh, but what would you say when it comes to communication? Uh, are we, are people becoming closer or more distant? Which, which is, I would say, uh, a strange thing. Yes. Uh, so what do you think about this? We are becoming, mm -hmm, we are becoming more distant, although we have, uh, let's say, different options and uh, we, we, we can connect more easily. We can communicate more easily with people all over or, or, or around the world. So, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so technology is making us more lazy. Okay, yeah, false information, so we have to be careful with that. Okay, mm -hmm. then as I said, we don't hang out like we used to do. Mm -hmm. Why? I mean, why? So, as a negative thing? <laughs> uh, yes, well, exactly. You as a um, well, distance learning uh, student or a distance learning uh, or a distance education in general is something that has, of course, its advantages, but also disadvantages. Now, since this is one of the things that is mentioned here in this lesson, um, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, now tell me, uh, feel free to share your opinion. Uh, I, I, I'm really interested in how you actually approach uh, distance learning. Of course, the idea of distance learning is uh, like, or was primarily uh, initiated, or it was meant to be chosen by people who have certain obligations or uh, employ people who didn't have time to attend classes. But now I would say that uh, this is different. Um, most of you distance learning students actually uh, do not uh, do not work. So the only thing is that you cannot attend classes. So you have these online classes. Now tell me, how do you feel about this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, of course, it, it, it has, it's a good idea. It needs improvement. Of course, anything, we, we can say that about anything and everything. Uh, Bellman said it's a good thing. We can sit in our homes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, what, what are you missing? What are the things that you don't like about distance learning? You, you feel as if you don't have a sufficient interaction or live interaction is better? at least mm -hmm. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you think that it will help you to have more online classes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you think that um, is it different now compare uh, being in a class? Of course, you you, you know how this feels. Um, you can compare it to your to your uh, experience from high school. Uh, now compare this experience with the one that you you're, you're like getting now, uh, participating in online classes or attending a regular in in class uh, teaching process. Uh, what is different? Is the feeling different? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So do, do you feel uh, motivated, sufficiently motivated? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Misa mentioned that it would be good if you had some um, Mm -hmm. uh, additional classes or in class, uh, in class, let's say process uh, that would be done in in, in Sarajevo or in at, at different locations. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for some of you, uh, it's the same, and you feel as motivated as you would be if you were studying in class. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, but that's, a, I would say, a different issue. Uh, certain subjects make you feel um, demotivated. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's uh, it's because of the subject. I don't think it's because of the fact that you are like distance learning students. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, but in general, what, what are the things that you like about it being distance learning students? What would you add? Okay, so what are the things that you like and what would you add, if anything? I mean, what else you feel as if you're like missing when it comes to other, let's say, forms of communication? Mm -hmm. So you would need mm -hmm, more classes. Okay, Mirza, when you said it's because of the way that professors are teaching you, um, what do you have in mind? What is it? <clears throat> is it is it different to listen to someone teaching you online? What, so what is the feeling different or it's just not enough? So what is the problem there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, yes, of course. You can say that about uh, any form of teaching. Yeah, some people are, hmm, let's say, better in that, or, uh, uh, and some are, some are not so good. I mean, it's a matter of, I would say, perception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, Merima said that. Uh, that she's missing <coughs> the feeling of being in class. Yes, you're actually miss missing on, uh, on that part, uh, missing out on, on interaction between um, uh, or among among colleagues or with your colleagues. Uh, this is something that you can try to achieve, or I don't know whether you actually uh, have a feeling of belonging to a certain, like, at least virtual community while you were present in online classes this is a kind of community that you are like creating so you can spend your time of course this is different than being together in class and spending time together um, being like physically present with each other uh, the feeling must be of course different but yes you can at least use these I would say online classes again to try to try to uh, get to know each other a bit better mm -hmm. 
Yes, so uh, by reading your comments, I have a feeling that all of you or most of you think that you should have more classes, that the time is too short, okay? Mm -hmm. If we don't have other activities, okay. Yes, 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 yes. So, yeah, do you feel isolated in a way? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's just the beginning. You and you, you guys need some time to get used to to get used to this. Uh, you need to find your own pace or your own rhythm. You need to think about uh, the way uh, the, the way of learning, way of studying that suits you uh, the most. Okay, there are different ways how you can uh, approach different, of course, subjects. Um, we all different when it comes to, let's say, acquiring knowledge or learning. Uh, some of us are visual learners. Some of us um, learn by listening to something. So you you should think about the best ways. Okay, what what, what works well for you, and you need to think about uh, the best time of the day. So the time of the day when you would be more the most effective. You need to be uh, try to be as disciplined as possible. Okay, because uh, it's everything is like in your hands in terms of organizing your time and obligations. Of course, online classes uh, is your obligation, but you have to uh, make sure that you are like working for the rest of, or you know, if, not only while you have these online classes, but uh, you have to organize the rest of your time in, in a good way so you can actually like compensate for uh, other classes that you don't have online. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll try it. Okay, Hello again. Yeah, we have a little bit of a problem, but I'll try it again. Let's see, I'll just turn the screen on the screen. Okay, I'll try it again. Okay, I'll try it again. Okay, so I don't know which part you 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 heard uh, last, but uh, and it, anyway, um, yeah, I was just wondering. I was curious about whether you feel as if it is more difficult to organize your time and to be self-disciplined uh, as distance learning students. Is it more difficult? Do you think that distance learning studying or this or this way of studying uh, distance education is more difficult than in class? Do you have problems this with with self discipline? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why not, Merima? Is, is it uh, because it's specifically software engineering as 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 a as a profession? Why why do you think it is not possible to to it wouldn't be possible to learn like this? Mm -hmm. Mm 
Okay. Yes, because uh, programming and mathematics are, I won't say a little bit more demanding, but they are different. Yes. You can learn and you can practice at home. I mean, uh, we, in classes, or you can use classes to ask questions or to ask as many questions as, as, as yeah, possible uh, and to try to understand the concept and the logic. Mm -hmm. Of course, but now uh, it's different uh, in terms of you, you guys having to uh, maybe take or have more responsibility. Um, I don't know about the way how you're actually doing it in programming, but I guess that uh, my idea of it was that you would uh, you would try to understand the concept or the logic of programming uh, together with professors, and then uh, you would practice at home and maybe um, next time when you when you have online classes, you would ask questions if if you have any. But uh, yeah, but anyway, always um, feel free at least when it comes to English, but I hope that you have the same opportunity uh, with other professors or in other, for other subjects uh, to say uh, what you think should be different, okay? Um, ask for, for the things that you guys feel that you don't have and you should have, okay? So uh, always feel free to make any kind of suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, this is good. I, I would say that that's a good side because uh, in a way you guys are developing uh, a skill for self-learning or long, lifelong learning, which is very important. Uh, you're becoming more autonomous in your in the process of studying. Uh, you're not relying on on, on uh, someone's assistance as in class students. I, I think uh, they, they they do that in a way. Uh, so by at the same time, you feel as if you don't have enough classes. But I I think and I hope it pushes you maybe to become more independent and more active and to research maybe more intensively or more actively uh, and to become more, as I said, uh, autonomous in this whole process of studying. Mm -hmm. Which can be good, yeah, self-sufficient, well, self-sufficient, self independent, yes, autonomous in, in the way how you work. Um, so I would recommend you, uh, I mean, in general, to do as much research as possible with different things and use online classes to make questions or, or, or to try to understand the concepts or the main things, okay, and then practice at home as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway, uh, so since we, actually like made a digression, but this is, I believe, very important when it comes to distance education, distance learning. Um, mm -hmm. What I wanted to ask you uh, is about, for example, English, with English as, as a subject, uh, do you feel any different because you, you for example, need to write in English or uh, is this kind of communication uh, okay? for you? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, because I, I think uh, yes, you are getting better and better. And I would say that um, by actually Okay, Ahmed, I don't know which professor, but yeah, anyway, um, we can always... Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so what is important? Mm -hmm. 
let me just make a comment about uh, this kind of, uh, of communication when it comes to uh, English classes, the fact that you write most of the things um, helps you actually to, to notice the things that you maybe don't know as much as you should, okay? Um, the problems that you potentially might have, so you can try to correct them. Uh, of course, it's important to write because you don't have many opportunities to actually do that or you all of us are a bit lazy when it comes to, to, to writing, so this is another good side of it. Uh, but we can also try to, to, to practice maybe um, like having conversation, which is a little bit difficult because if there is like 70 of you, uh, then we, we cannot, of course, speak at the same time, but we can think of something so we can try to have some sort of conversation or a communication. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, it has its a good uh, and, and, of course, downsides or benefits and, and, and negative elements, but uh, we should all try to uh, make it as beneficial as possible for you. Okay, so, um, mm -hmm. okay, but when it comes to, even when it comes to these more demanding subjects, uh, think about my advice, okay? Just use the online classes to try to understand the concepts and try to understand the principles, okay? Uh, in the case of programming, for example, the logic, and then practice as much as possible, uh, just practice, do that at home. Um, and then again, use next online class to ask questions uh, about problems that you didn't understand while practicing. So, um, and try to do as much research as possible, okay? And when you feel down, try to, to remember that actually this is helping you to develop a very important skill of uh, self, self autonomous or yeah, self dependent or autonomous learning, uh, lifelong learning, because what's important for you guys is to actually learn how to learn, okay, how to study, how to approach new things. Because when, when you manage that, or when you manage to do that, when you manage to actually uh, develop this skill, then you will easily uh, learn about new and different things. So not, not only the ones that you are studying uh, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me just see some other comments. Merima, yeah, I had a question about testing in English. It's more important to answer questions. Well, well, both. Uh, I said that both will be um, like valued or evaluated. Uh, it's important to try to answer, to give correct answers to the questions, but also, yes, to, to try to write them down uh, correctly. So, yeah, both things are, are, are important, both aspects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can understand that, Harun. It's like with any other subject. I mean, you simply um, like the way how someone uh, is teaching or you don't, okay? Um, but with, with online classes, uh, I mean, teachers have to make a different kind of effort to teach, but at least, as I said, let, let's just try to make um, make it as beneficial as possible for you guys. So if you feel as if you need something that you're not getting, okay, please feel free to say that, to make a comment, okay, to maybe suggest uh, something that you would like to have or the way how you would like to work or some, I don't know, additional or uh, classes or if you, if you have some other ideas. Uh, at least I can say that about English, but I hope that that other other professors give you the same kind of uh, well opportunity to do that. So anyway, as I said, if you have any ideas, any suggestions, so with regard to especially uh, the way how we do. Uh, how we organize or how we do online classes in English, uh, just feel free to say that. We'll continue discussing this and other other uh, things next time, okay? Uh, what I wanted you, uh, you guys just to pay attention to when it comes to these uses of ICT 
uh, in different professions consider like these specific professions like for, well yeah here what is mentioned here are factories hospitals yes there is um, there was a homework assignment